I'm excited to be part of what God is doing in this hour. God is so good. So, Father, right now we come in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, Father, we just ask you today that by your Spirit you move in our hearts and in our lives. And, Lord, we've been singing about drawing close to you and we want more of you and all these things that we've been singing about, Lord. Lord, let that be real in our hearts today. We just want you to come. We just want you to come, Lord, and move in your, by your Spirit. And, Lord, draw us to yourself as is that hunger that you're creating inside us, Lord, that hunger for more of you, Lord, more of you, more of you, and less of us. But So, Lord, just have your way in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Tom was talking about some of the things that are happening worldwide, and there is, it looks like chaos everywhere. But I'm glad that God's not flustered. Amen? I'm glad that he's not up there pulling hair out of his head. But uh, he knows that if, if everything's okay, all right? He knows the beginning from the end, and he knows uh, exactly what's happening. And, and, uh, and it is true. It is true. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises up a stand against him, doesn't he? And sometimes uh, these things happen, but uh, God, we've been even singing about that today, that God will turn it around for good. Do you believe that? Whatever happens in our life, if we can keep our eyes on Jesus, he'll turn it around for good. You'll turn it around for good, and that is amazing. We've been talking about, singing about a victorious life today. We've been talking about victory and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, it's great to have songs, but when it becomes a reality in your own life, see, God never saved me that I might fail or that I might live in defeat, negativity, all that rubbish. He saved me to set me free from that. And he wants us to live in victory. He wants us to know the power of God. He wants us to know what it is to be born again, trans, totally transformed, taken out of one kingdom and brought into a whole new kingdom, the kingdom of joy. The Bible even says things like the joy of the Lord is our strength. If you can allow get joy into him, you know, if, if joy is our strength, what's our weakness in? when we let misery get in, inside us, when we get failure inside us, negativity, whatever it might be. So today, I want to talk a little bit about victory. To live a victorious life, you must know what God has made available to you. You've got to know what God has made available to you. You know, when Jesus came and he just talked simple talk. You know, today, sometimes... In teachings, we want so much information. We want to know all about who the man-child is. We want to know what the, what the badger skin on the tabernacle of Moses means. And that they're, those things, I'm not saying that they're not bad. They're great. But I believe that we can know a lot of things about other things, but we don't know who we really are in Christ. We don't really know what Jesus has done for us. And we can be still knowing and having a lot of knowledge, but still living in defeat and failure. So you've got to know what God has made available to us. It's like purchasing, say, a caravan, and, and, and you don't realize that there's a hot water system in it. So you shower in the cold all the dark time. You don't know that there's electricity, so you walk in the dark everywhere. So, you know, you've got to know what, what's there. A little bit like my phone. My phone drives me crazy. You're, you're there with your phone and it's all going wacko and everything like that and a five-year-old child picks it up and fixes it up for you. Or they say, do you know you've got this? <laughs> and they push a button and something starts happening on that thing. You see, can I say this? There's a lot more that God has made available to us than what we've got right now. Amen? You, you want the more? See, we're saying we want more, Lord. We want more. I want more revelation. I, I just don't want knowledge. I want revelation. See, revelation, when you get a revelation, a revelation will change your life. A revelation will change the way you think. A revelation will, will bring truth, and the truth will make you free. 
We've got to understand what God has made available to us. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. You see, when, when we come to, to sing, you see, if you want to get into victory, it's no good. Praise the Lord. You've got to suck a bundle. You've got to do something. You've got to break the, 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 the crust off us. We've got to break the, the atmosphere of negativity or the world that we've been in and you shake it off, amen. And, and you lift up your hands and shout to the, to the Lord, amen. Some people don't like to shout. They, they say, I want it quiet. I want to tell you, God speaks more about shouting than he does about praying. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Shout unto God. Amen. And, and you know, they're, they're the sort of things that if you want to break through, you've got to do some things to break through. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. And forget not all of his benefits or all that is made available to me. He has healed me. He has delivered me. He's forgiven me. He's done everything that I need. Amen. So today, I want more of him. Anybody else want more of him? Anybody else want a bit more revelation? A bit more under? Come on, lift up your hands. Don't look at, just look at me like a cow looks at a new gate. Start crying out to God. Come on. Come on, Lord. Pour it in. I want more. I want more of you. I want more of you. Tell him you want more of him. See, I want more. Don't, don't think that what we're saying is like negative or something like that. It's not like going up and asking for a hamburger and saying, I want more onions. <laughs> I want more of this. I want more of that. No, I just want more of you, Lord. I want more. There's something inside me that's craving more of him. There's something inside of me that, that wants to see God move on this planet, wants to see people set free and you know, uh, one of my friends rang me the other day and said, Neil, he said, pray for India. He said, 23 of our pastors died last week. There are people have been, not only the COVID thing, but there's also an uprising amongst the, the Hindus and goodness knows what, and they're out there burning churches and people just loving Jesus getting killed, martyred. There's a lot of things there. God, for God to move, he's got to have an army, amen. An army that's equipped, an army that's on fire. Oh, I love that. See, know what God has made available to us. You are more than a conqueror. Listen to that. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. Romans 8, 37 says, Yet in all. What does all mean? What is the Greek meaning of all? <laughs> Yeah, you can't do much with it, can you? <laughs> Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Tom was sharing in communion about being in him and him in us. I'm not on my own. I'm not walking this journey, you know, just hoping and trying. The king of glory, hallelujah, came into my life. I, I invited him in and the king of glory came in. Cause me to, to become more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror through him who loved us. Not in our own strength, friend, but through him. Through him today. That's why we want more of him. I want more of him because he is the conqueror. He is the one who's triumphed over the devil. He is the one who's made a show of him openly. He, he is the one. Amen. <laughs> we want more of him. You've got to stop looking at our own ability or our own inability to God's ability. Amen. Oh, man, I, I've got something going through me. Not, I shouldn't have said it like that. <laughs> I've got something there that's, that's pulsating in my thinking and all around me just as I'm starting to study and, and realizing the, and, and going over it again and again and again, the power, the majesty, the anointing of a living God. Amen. He is not defeated. He is not sitting up in heaven on a cloud playing a harp. 
He is all powerful, amen. All powerful. We've got to stop looking at our lack. We've got to look, start looking to God's abundance. He is an abundant God, amen. Abundantly. The Bible says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. That little word all again. The Lord will deliver you. When you know your legal right, when you know what God has made available to you, what God has done for you, amen. You can't, you can't say things like, I hate you, and then go up 10 minutes later and say, I love you, Lord. I got the shock of my life one time when we are in America and we are with some visiting ministry and the, 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 the pastor's wife um, was having a bit of a conflict with the waitress because of the knife or something that she thought wasn't the right one or something like that. And, and the girl, the waitress, got a little bit snooty as well. And uh, they had this bit of a conflict. And Nancy and I were there, and we got the shock of our life because when the girl walked away, the, this woman, this pastor's wife said, God, kill her children. Don't treat God like an idiot. He watches, he sees things, he hears things. And, and you know, this is what I believe, that, that we've got to know our responsibility to forgive. 1 Peter 2.11, it says this, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, Abstain from fleshly lusts which war against your soul. 1 Peter 2.11, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against your soul. We see here the flesh warring against our souls. The soul, your will, your emotions, your mind. The soul, there's a war going on for your soul. When you get born again, your will, your mind, and your emotions want to please God. When you get born again, your will, your mind, and your emotions want to please and serve God. But your flesh has a mind of its own. It wants pleasure. It seeks revenge. It seeks selfish ambition. 1 Corinthians 9, 25, 27. Let's have a, a look at those verses there. 1 Corinthians 9. I should just go and take two steps back and have a look here. Beloved, I... Oh, you still got that one at home. It says... But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I preach to others, I myself should become disqualified. There's a soul part of you. But I discipline. Is there a little bit more, John? Well, we're, we're there. that'll do anyhow. But he said he disciplined his body, he, he brings it into submission. The flesh man wants to control you. Your flesh man. You see, we're at war with our flesh. Flesh, uh, you know, is at war with everything of the spirit. I've, I've been around a little while now, and I know what it's like when you get into a meeting and the presence of God is flowing and the power of God is manifest. And, and you know, it might, might be something like, uh, you know, let's, let's do so-and-so. And you put up your hand, yeah, I'll be there. I'll, I'll do that. And then by the time you get to the car park, this other voice starts coming, why did you want to do that? You said you'd come in to the all-night prayer meeting? <laughs> oh, my goodness, why would you want to do that? You put up your hand to come to the all-night prayer meeting. Has anybody ever been there? Who knows what I'm talking about? Or am I the only 
person on this island. <laughs> See, the spirit person wants to do things, wants to love on God, wants to do this, but the flesh man stops us. Flesh man wars. Flesh man says, I'm tired. It's cold. You see, this is our responsibility to discipline my body and bring it into subjection. The mayor of New York, Giuliano, I think his name was, curved the crime rate in that city to a degree. And they asked him, how did you do that? You know what he said? He said, I started with the small things. I started with jaywalking, littering, etc. As a result, the crime rate began to fall. You know, sometimes with us, you know, when we, we try to stop and deliver ourselves from all the big things, start, start to work on the small things in your life. Start to work on something and get the victory in that and then, then take on another one, amen, and start to progress. Start to move up the ladder. Start to, to move one thing at a time and, and start to defeat the enemy. Crime rate for Ever Ever tried to lose weight? Ever tried to give up smoking? Ever tried to give up drinking al alcohol? You're trying so hard that your body, your flesh screams out, are you trying to kill me? Are you trying to kill me? Or just have one more slice of cake? Oh man, last night I, I failed. I'm trying to lose weight. Nancy was in one room, I was in the other room watching the footy. She was in another room watching something else. And I snuck out, opened up the freezer, <laughs> and got out the ice cream. <laughs> then I went into the cupboard and I got out the Milo. And I scooped her up and I just put a couple of extra ones on. For, so Nancy's not, I'll put one on for Nancy. I'll put one on for Betty. <laughs> I'll just put on another one on for whoever. Then I poured all over and stirred it all up. And, I, and then I, one thing, I made a mistake. No. I left the dish in the sink. <laughs> Be sure your sins will find you out. Amen. Oh, just have another smoke, just another puff. Just have another drink. Just have another one. Come on, come on, it won't really hurt you. There's so much going on in this world today. You know, the enemy's there. He's after your soul. Romans 8, 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation <laughs> to those who are in Christ you do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation. You know, isn't this just like the devil? He gets you to do things and then he condemns you. I was condemned while I was eating it. You see, when, when condemnation gets hold of you, failure, defeat, negativity grips your soul. And Satan gains access to the spirit man. Gains access in you. So many people that are filled with the spirit are defeated, broken, because the enemy has got a hold of you somehow or other. Fear and doubt rush in. Negativity, condemnation. Condemnation is a horrible thing. Especially when nobody else is saying anything, it's just you. Because it's internal. 
Sometimes when it's somebody else condemning us, we can stand up a little bit. But when, when it's the whole thing's happening inside of you, and the enemy's got hold of that, that part of you, your soul part. You see, my, my outward man is already dead. It's dying. Look around. <laughs> You, you can go to the gym. You can, you can go there and pretend. I, I see. Oh. <laughs> and when I go for a walk every now and then, I, I have a little trot, you know, and I, think, and I only go about 50 feet. And I'm <laughs> but you see, you can go there and you can pump iron. You can, you can try to preserve your youth. You can do this. But, but uh, just have a look around. And the wrinkles start you know, hanging down. <laughs> it's already gone to the pack. You can have a body like this too if you neglect it. <laughs> but you know, we can do these things and try all these sort of things, but doesn't seem to help much. Fear and doubt rush in. This is when you've got to draw upon the resources of heaven. This is why we come together. This is why of a Sunday as we come and starting to talk even around the communion, in the worship, there are songs, the songs that lift us up. But you see, if you don't, if you don't participate, if you, if you don't get involved, if you just sit there with your hands in your head, if you just sit there with your arms folded, if you just sit there thinking about something else. I know a lot of you right now are thinking about ice cream and... <laughs> And Milo, and, and I, I guarantee some of you are going to go home and have it. <laughs> hey? Roy will. <laughs> you keep her quiet, Roy. This is when, you know, you have to, even though you don't feel like it. You've got to draw on the resources of heaven and cry out and work with God, not with the devil. God does not condemn, amen. God never condemns. You've got to start crying out, I'm a new creation. I am redeemed, hallelujah, by the blood of the Lamb. Why don't you say it right now? I'm a new creation. I am redeemed, hallelujah, by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am complete in Him. Amen. I am not half, I am complete. I am renewed day by day. Though I fall, God will lift me up. I am redeemed from the curse. Amen. You have a responsibility to repent. I'm not talking about going to confession. But repenting with a pure heart. Repenting with a pure heart. God, I'm so, so sorry. I'm so sorry, Lord. We can't treat God like if he's an idiot, though. God knows the intent of our heart. And there's not one of us here that hasn't made a mistake, hasn't done something wrong, haven't got angry, bitter, goodness knows what. So the enemy keeps throwing stuff at you to try to pull you down, knock you down. He did the same with Jesus. But repent with a pure heart. I'm so, so sorry, Lord. Lord, please forgive me. Uh, you know, I don't know. Just get before God. God, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. And then, when you've done that, dust yourself off. 
and throw your hands in the air, hallelujah, and start to rejoice and start to praise God, amen, for his great deliverance, for his mercy, for his grace. Whatever he's done, start to rejoice. Dust yourself off. Lift up those hands that hang down and rejoice. Guard your spirit, man. Don't let anger, unforgiveness, or bitterness get in. Satan's after your spirit, man. You've got to remember it's a spiritual battle. Satan's after your spirit, man. We don't war with natural weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Casting down. Do you believe that today? We've got the Word of God. You must know the Word of God. You've got to know the Word of God so you can exercise your legal rights. Legal rights. Satan's power to to deceive is on the grounds of ignorance. God doesn't want us ignorant. He wants us to know. You've got to know the name of Jesus. Jesus gave the believer the legal right to use his name or he gave you, in another way of saying it, the power of attorney. That's, that sounds that I can understand that. If I give somebody the power of attorney, that means that he has rights over everything that I own. He's just, if he signs something, it's just like as if I signed it. If he says something, it's just like I said it. You've got to know about the new birth. Christ in you. Greater is he who is in you than he that in the world. No weapon formed against you can prosper. You've got to know about the blood of Jesus that it cleanses me from all unrighteousness. Cleanses me, hallelujah. If I don't know that, if I, I, I'm, I'm ignorant, that I can call on the blood of Jesus and cry out for the blood. There's a lot of opinions, but the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses me from all unrighteousness. From all the sins, amen. The power of the Holy Spirit empowers you. You've got to know about the Holy Spirit. I'm just touching headlines. Every one of these are a, a message in their, on their own. The gifts of the Spirit enlighten you. You've got to know about the whole armor of God. It protects you. It's by these spiritual weapons, which God has given to the church, all believers may be able to war a warfare. Be part of that great victorious army that the gates of hate will not prevail against. You see, Jesus wears the victor's crown. He has triumphed over hell and death. The enemy is after your soul. You come in and try to get you angry or bitter or whatever it might be. When that happens, and then he starts to condemn you. Then you start to feel that pressure. Your hand, hands say, look, friend, I've been there. Anybody else been there? When the enemy just pours in. You know what? I say this. He doesn't attack dead people. He attacked Jesus Christ because he carried something and he had the answer for the world. He, if you're being attacked, you should say this. Thank you. Thank you, devil. That means I'm going to kick your butt. That means that I'm going to draw on the resources of heaven and I'm going to call upon the name of the Lord and God's going to deliver me, and God's going to set me free. He's going to empower me. He's going to deliver me. He's going to strengthen me, and I'm going to rise up. I'm going to rise up. Hallelujah. I will rise. Amen. I will rise. I want to tell you this today.
Global Connections Church will rise, hallelujah. It will fulfill the purpose and the plan that God has given to us because of you, because of people, because God is moving in your spirit, moving around your heart. The enemy might try to attack you, but I want to tell you that the devil has already been defeated and God has conquered the enemy on your behalf, amen. And you have the legal right to stand up and declare the goodness of God and tell the devil to get off your case and rise up and slap him up the side of the head. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus is on the throne. He has triumphed over hell and death. He wears the victor's crown. Can I say this? We need the power of God. You need to know who you are in Christ. You need the anointing. You need you need it for what is up ahead. The battle is the Lord's, and that is so true, and we've quoted that so many times. That God will use his army. God will use his people, amen. And that's why the devil hates you, because you are God's answer in Christ Jesus, amen. So it's time to dust ourselves off, amen. It's time to put them six guns on, hallelujah. It's time to know who you are in Christ. I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man. Time to understand that I've been filled with the, with the greatest power. The greatest power on earth. The same power that raised Christ from the dead is in me now. It's in you now. So I want you to dust off if there's things there that are attacking you. If there are things there that are getting around. If you've got, some of you today might have the stupidest thing that you're old. You might think you're old. How stupid. When the Bible says, though the outward man is perishing, there's an inward man that's being renewed day by day. So who are you going to listen to, your flesh or your spirit? Spirit. <laughs> Go to the top of the class. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. Don't say you're old. Say I'm brand new. I'm not retiring. I'm refiring. <laughs> Amen? Come on, let's stand to our feet here in this house today. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just got to get this out of gear here. The enemy's after your soul, man. Trying to fill it with junk. But God's after your spirit, man. He wants to clothe you. You're led by the flesh or you're led by the spirit. It's, just, it's got to be a change, man. The Father, right now in Jesus' name, I take authority over every work of Satan. I thank you for my legal right today that I can use that name. You've given me the power of attorney. You've given me authority, the authority of the believer. And in the mighty name of Jesus, I take authority over all the works of the enemy. Lord, I pray today for a release in the hearts and the minds of people. Father, today where the enemy comes in, God, you're going to raise up a standard against that enemy. Lord, people are going to break out of that uh, complacency. They're going to break out of that negative thinking. They're going to break out of that whatever it might be that's around their lives. Break out of sickness into health. Break out of whatever it is that gets around them. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as we cry out to you today, I want more of you, Lord. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Lord, your spirit will come and touch us. Your spirit will come and deliver us. Lord, but we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to cry out to you. 
We've got a responsibility to draw upon your name. We've got a responsibility to draw close to you. Father, we're crying out to you today that you begin to move mightily by your Spirit in our lives. Father, I'm asking you to come right now. I'm asking you to come right now, Jesus. Come in your own special way. Touch people, deliver people, set people free. Lord, we break the atmosphere over people's lives that of the enemy and we release the anointing. We release the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing that will break the yoke. Lord, I release the anointing over this place. I release the anointing. Hallelujah. You're anointing, my God. I'm asking people to be, have a pure heart today. Lord, a, a desire to be set free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're in this house today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to tell you today the greatest thing you could ever do is invite Him to come into your life. Invite Him to come into your life and set you free. You've been, there's somebody in this house today and you've been hassled and you've been bombarded by the enemy. He's had, he, he, your life has been like a football. He's kicked you around, he's kicked you here, he's kicked you there. And, and it's like as if you've had no control over your own life. But I want to tell you today that Jesus is here to deliver you, to set you free. If you can open up your heart today and let the King of glory come in, He will be your champion. He will be your champion. He will be your champion. Amen. Oh, He will touch your life. I want that person to quickly raise their hand. I want to pray with you this morning. Quickly give me a wave in this house right now. Give me a wave. You're, you're, you're here, I know that. Come on, let the Spirit of God get around your life. Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus, those people that, that sense the presence of God over your life right now to set you free, I want you to quickly come out the front. I believe the Spirit of God wants this people here and, and God just wants to set you free. You know, you know. Don't be embarrassed. You know that you've got to break some things over your life. You know, you know you've been speaking negative over your life. You know you've been saying the wrong things and thinking the wrong things. Jesus is here today to set you free. Tom, come on out. Come on out here today. Come on, come on. Somebody here today and you've got trouble in your legs, down, your, down the front part of your legs there and near the top part of your legs. Who's that person? I'd love to pray with you this morning. I'm to pray with you. Somebody here this, today, and you've got a real tightness across your chest. A real tightness across your chest. Quickly, who's that person? I want to pray with you today, right now. Quick. Come, 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 come. Jacarada Burande. Tighten right across your chest. Who's that person? Someone has problems with their right shoulder. They're locked up in their right shoulder, like they can't lift it. It gets up there and it end up. Twisting over like that rather than... Here he comes. You know, Here he comes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a couple of them. 